to a very chilly um, sketchbook club. It's freezing. <laughs> it's, um, it's a beautiful autumn day up there. Blue, blue sky, long shadows, just spectacular colours. It's a magnificent autumn that we're experiencing here in very rural Hampshire at the moment. Um, so I couldn't resist. We are creating a, a very autumnal um, page today with leaves and berries and toadstools and pumpkins. This would work just as well if you were doing this in spring or summer um, with the lovely colours of spring and making it a bit more green rather than autumnal. And we're going to be using watercolours. Watercolours, I think, are slightly misunderstood. They're fantastic and we've used them before just as a sort of pure pigment but I'd love to show you the sort of magic of them and how, um, how they interact with water. They've got a sort of mind of their own and if left to their own devices, um, they can create some really wonderful images. The printouts have a lovely mix of berries and you've even got a pumpkin and acorns. We're going to really look at colours and, um, and shapes and trying to kind of fill the whole page with a lovely composition. And if you've got a gap, then pop a little leaf in, etc. So you'll need some watercolours. These are really beautiful and shiny and new. Uh, mine, not so much. but. Um, um, important that you use the little palette of the watercolours. If you don't have one, just a plate will do, but you do need something to kind of keep your watery mix in. Um, I've got two waters because one will get dirty, that's fine, keep the dirty one, and just a very clean one if you want to clean your brush. Um, you'll need some tissues um, and you will need some uh, cotton wool buds. Um, and you will also need two brushes. I'm using a, a size six and a size one. You'll also need a needle. I'll explain why later. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely, it's a really lovely method where you can get the watercolour to, to do some magic things. Also, you might want to use some coloured pencils. I obviously find it really hard not to use coloured pencils on anything. Um, you might just want to leave it as watercolour, but there is something rather lovely about adding that little fine detail with a, with a sharp pencil when the watercolour is all dry. So I've picked out some lovely, really kind of autumnal colours, browns and dark greens and oranges, and it's quite nice to, to work over them a little bit, um, to add some more detail, giving a bit of definition too. They are a lovely way of giving that final finishing touch to your piece, so don't forget your pencils too. So you've got your reference. Now, feel free just to use this reference and to copy from these images of acorns and leaves and pumpkins, etc. But actually, how wonderful to draw from life, to actually choose leaves and berries. So let's go outside. Right, we're going to forage, <laughs> we're going to find things to draw and actually there's something just really magic about foraging for drawing rather than for eating. If you've ever been blackberry picking it's quite manic isn't it? How many do I need? Have I got enough for the crumble? Or if you're gardening it's quite frenetic. Whereas this is really tranquil, it's quite meditative and you want to kind of form without sounding too pretentious a sort of connection with what you're going to draw. So for instance, if you're going to find a leaf that we're going to draw around, like we're going to do today, you want it to be the right shape, you want it to feel like it's going to fit nicely on your page. So take your time, really look at the shapes until you've found one that's about right that's going to fit on your page. So there's a small one up here, and this is perfect. It's a beautiful shape to draw around. It's symmetrical, and actually it's very hard to draw. Put that on a piece of paper and you'll have a wonderful shape as a template to paint on. Right, I've just seen really, really beautiful rose hip. It's so perfect. So I'm going to cut this off 
cheekily so we can paint it back at the studio. It's almost as if it's already got watercolour in it. Look at all that, the way that the orange and the yellow merge together. It's absolutely perfect. Oh, look at these, they're amazing. You can imagine painting these in red and then using a little white dot. The way that they're shining, they're really bright red. They're fabulous. These colours, they're absolutely amazing. It, they're just completely and utterly beautiful. Oh, I could take them all, but I want to take some which have that lovely turning into red. Also, you can really see the veins because the red has seeped into all the beautiful crevices. That's lovely. I'm underneath this amazing oak tree. It's just beautiful, it's one of my favourite trees. If you find something like that, that's beautiful, but it's missing its acorns, just cheat, it's fine. When you get back to your office or home or studio, you just put a little bit of sticky tape in or glue, glue them in place and draw them from that. I mean, that's just beautiful. Okay, so whilst I'm down here looking for acorns, I'm gonna look for the perfect oak leaf. Oh, look at that one, that's perfect. Beautiful autumn oak leaf. It's really stunning and what a lovely colour that is. And it might be a good idea to see if there's a kind of a, a here we go, a green one that doesn't break so easily. So that if you were going to draw around it, you've got one that's a bit more durable um, because this is quite a kind of fragile leaf. But these are perfect and they're just gorgeous shapes. Look at these apples. This is why I love autumn. I mean, look at those. I'm gonna take this one back to the studio. It's got that lovely bright yellow full of bugs and gorgeous streaks of red. Perfect for watercolor. It's all, already there, it's already there. It's just beautiful, lovely. Right, plenty of those are going in. Oh, and these are amazing. And actually someone in my sketchbook club did a beautiful watercolor repair um, and I'll show you later. And they sort of, sort of flicked paint on it to get that lovely speckledy effect. But these are lovely. I'm definitely taking some of these back to the studio. Oh, this is perfect. Look at these berries. I have to I cut one off to show you. They're really hidden away in the bush. But what's lovely about them is they've got red stalks and um, the black berries are really nicely contrasted. That's going to be so nice to draw. I'm definitely going to draw that. That's beautiful. Oh, look at the colour on this tree. The sun is making those yellow leaves look like they're on fire. This is what I mean about choosing things to draw from nature. It's so calm and it's so meditative. And, and actually, you do sort of form a very different connection with what you're, what you're looking at rather than the kind of speedy gardening, or as I said, that kind of foraging for food. This leaf is beautiful. I'm going to definitely draw it. I mean, look at that colour. It really is. It looks like it's luminous. lovely things that we've collected. So inspiring to have it all in front of us as well. It's just lovely having it all here in my studio. When we were outside, I was talking about choosing that perfect leaf, choosing the shape, um, one that you kind of have without meaning to sound too tree huggery, some kind of, some kind of connection with. Um, this leaf spooked to me. Um, it's, uh, there's something lovely about its shape and um, they're very hard, very hard. In the same way that um, I've mentioned before, things that are symmetrical um, are very difficult to translate to paper. So this is the method. You're going to get your leaf and position it where you want it. Take a pencil of a similar colour. So I've got a lovely um, sort of autumnal red and I'm going to draw around the leaf. It's really simple. It's a, it's a lovely method. Um, I use it. Um, and I'm an illustrator. It's not cheating. It's, it's, it is a shortcut, but you end up with a beautiful, perfect shape. What's wrong? What's wrong with that? It's, it's, it's great. And actually, if you are doing this with children, lovely because they get that perfect, perfect image. 
So once you've drawn around it, here comes the water. Now, there's a, this is a sort of not to, if you like. Um, it's a really easy, not a mistake, but it's just logic. Um, instinctively, you want to paint around the whole outside of the leaf in your paint, but don't, don't do that. The reason not to do that is because it'll dry by the time you've sort of mixed your infill and you'll end up with quite a sort of, well, clumsy is the wrong word, but it just doesn't look um, how you'd want it because it's got quite a thick outline. So the trick is, and this is where watercolours come, come into their own, you're going to completely cover that leaf shape with water. So quite, be quite generous, try not to go over your pencil line. Um, what you're doing is you're forming a sort of um, wall where the water ends, so will the paint. And you're really making it really quite wet with lots of water all over the leaf. Um, and you've got a sort of little puddle, a leaf shaped puddle on your page going right up to the edges with the point of your brush. I'm using the six for this, not the little one. Now, whilst that's wet, in your little palette, you're going to mix a colour that you're really happy with. I'm going to go straight in with a really lovely pinky red. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look like your leaf. But actually, I've been quite inspired by this leaf and these beautiful colours. Um, so, you're going to start splodging generous amounts of colour onto that leaf. Using the tip of your brush, it's perfect, it's already pointy, and you can go right into those edges um, with, those, with that sort of really lovely colour that you've chosen. Now I'm going to work from some of these other leaves that we found. These wonderful variegated leaves where they sort of change from green to red. I just love those colours. So I'm going to add now some green and just sort of swirl it around with my brush. And I'm going to add some yellow inspired by some of these beautiful yellows that we found outside. Um, and again, just sort of mixing it up with the water, adding all these amazing autumn colours and just letting it do its thing. And look at that, look how it all swirls and mixes. It's just, it's just, it's just magic. It's got a little life of its own and if it's left to its own devices, it's really effective. Um, and the more you can sort of leave it alone, if you like, the, be the better really. So once you've got your um, leaf and it's all covered in water, um, painty water, then you can really start to manipulate it. So I'm moving the paint around and going right up to the edges and you'll notice that it doesn't stray, it doesn't stray at all because you've made that little barrier. These lovely edges will be stunning when they're, when they're dry. Now a little bit of, a little bit of magic. <laughs> Take your needle Take your needle and have a look at the leaf and look at those beautiful veins. And using your needle, you're going to draw in those veins. You don't have to press very hard, but you're just going to follow the veins. You'll notice that, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? But they go to each point. Um, and you're just sort of making very, very small scratches. But it's just so beautiful because all the paint seeps into those little delicate scratches. You really don't have to press hard and it just creates the most beaut beautiful effect. And because they're so fine, the little scratches, um, they are as delicate as the little tiny veins themselves. And it's up to you how involved you want it to be. It can be quite simple. And then if you want to, just sort of drag it down a little for the stalk. And that's very, and that becomes a very delicate end to that leaf. And there we have it. Honestly, this is the hardest bit. Leave it alone. It's so difficult. I find it really hard. I tend to kind of want to sort of, you know, work at it a bit more. But, but I promise you, the more you leave watercolour alone, just to dry as it is, the more pleasing the results will be. So I'm going to try really hard and just not touch it and just leave that alone. Um, so in the meantime, whilst that's drying, I'm going to show you um, another little trick using this needle again. So the first thing you want to do is get a lovely green that you're happy with or um, a yellow. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in this mix 
um, and I'm, I keep picking up this little leaf. I think I'm sort of connected to it. It's an amazing colour, um, but I'm going to make it a little tiny bit artistic license, tiny bit green, um, so that it contrasts really nicely with this orangey red leaf. So you're going to scratch in your leaf using your needle, so don't take your eyes off it. Otherwise, I promise, you'll look away and, and you'll lose it. And using your needle, you're going to draw in all those little veins, all those little lines. It can be very simple. Um, so I can barely see it. Now, using your smaller brush this time, you've mixed a colour that's a kind of, I don't know, it's quite nice to make it quite different, so keep all the colours quite different. So I would avoid using oranges and reds because it's right next to an orange and red leaf, for example. And then I'm going to go over the scratches and look at that, it's so lovely. All the little veins that you scratched in are showing through the paint and they're so delicate and it would be very difficult to paint or to draw those tiny marks ordinarily but with the needle um, you've made this really sophisticated tiny image, it's beautiful. You could, once you've kind of, m kind of created a page where you're happy um, it would be lovely to add more. So if there's a space, so what I've done with this page, um, every time there's a little space, I've added another leaf. And once you've done a few more larger objects, it might be quite nice to, to use that method again and um, with lots of different colours, because there are so many amazing colours to choose from. Um, so moving on, next we're going to do this rose hip, which um, I absolutely love. It's like a little sculpture. It's just magnificent. The colours are wonderful. Entirely up to you whether you wanted to kind of draw from life or draw from reference. It's quite nice to use pencils to roughly draw out your shape um, before you start and nice to kind of use a similar colour. So I'm just going to draw this rose hip shape very roughly out here. Um, and you don't want to press hard, you're literally, it's a little guide for you. So it's not really about mark making, it's just about where do you want it and a guide to kind of where your paint's going to go. Um, and then using a sort of green pencil, I'll kind of roughly draw in where I want the leaves and the stalk of the rose hip. So now, using your larger brush, it's a slightly different method, you're going to go for, so don't wet it um, this time, um, you're going to go for a really intense colour um, and you're just going to paint one side like that of that really intense colour. So it's just, you're just putting on that paint. Then you're going to wash your brush and use the same water, it doesn't have to be clean water. Add some water and just sort of moving that paint around. You might want to, this is where tissues come in handy as well, dry the brush a little bit and, um, and just add the water like that so that it's all um, slightly diluted and it just again it's that trick of leaving it alone it's so difficult to do my instinct is to play with it some more and move the paint around but i promise you if you leave it alone it'll be it'll be much more effective so i'm then going to paint in the leaves now don't worry too much because this is where you might when it's dry add a bit of pencil add a bit of detail um, and, uh, and it'll just add to the effectiveness. So I'm going to draw in the stalk, but I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to do the leaves later because I'm going to do them in a darker colour and I don't want them to kind of mix with that green. So there's a lot of jumping around, but actually it's quite satisfying because what you're doing is um, you're, you're moving quite rapidly onto the composition um, and you're having to leave things and go back to them. So it's quite satisfying if you're impatient like me <laughs> because you get to see how the page is going to look quite, quite sort of speedily. Um, so moving on and looking at my page, um, if I'm going to choose the carrot, like I've done with this one, where we're just going to leave the paper behind as the highlight, so treating the paper as the white almost, it's a, quite a nice idea to make it fit around the drawing that you're doing, so kind of fitting around your composition. So I'm going to do a nice wonky carrot. And then using my um, wand brush, not my six brush, I'm going to sort of mix a nice orange and make it quite sort of watery. 
And instead of what, again, is quite instinctive, is to just paint the whole thing orange, um, I'm going to um, add little by little the orange paint so that there is lots of white on it. Um, and every time I go back to my orange, it's a change in the colour a little bit. So the, carrot, the sort of lines of the carrots are being painted in and you're leaving a lot of it white, um, which will look really effective afterwards. So you're just sort of playing around with the orange, adding a bit and leaving a lot of it white. So you'll end up with um, areas that haven't been painted and areas that have with different shades of orange and we're going to go over it when it's dry. So again, really hard to do, but you're gonna to have to just put that to one side as well. Um, and, and we're going to go to that later. So I think we're going to try the apple now. So um, this is an apple that we got um, from the garden and it's, this is what's so lovely about having, having something um, in front of you that you maybe couldn't see in the reference. Although there are some really lovely apples here and I've, I've tried to find ones with a kind of similar method. But there's nothing quite like looking, looking at the detail of the, of the real thing, if you like. Um, so I'm just going to draw that sort of very rough shape. Now, it's quite a similar way to working um, where we worked with the first leaf. Um, so wet the whole apple with water first. And we're going to start with the sort of lightest colour, um, which actually is a sort of a, if you look at this, it's actually almost yellow. So, um, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my, um, to my colour. White watercolour I wouldn't recommend using. I think if you want it light then there should be no paint on it or just water um, because white tends to make it just a bit, cl bit cloudy rather than a kind of lighter. Um, so I'm just adding this lovely green um, and already the water um, and the watercolour paint is sort of doing doing its magic it's such an extraordinary thing and i love it when it just does its own thing um, and it's it's just it's knowing when to kind of leave it i think that's the scary thing and i think if you once you've done a few of these um, i think you'll see how it works but it's all about more water than you imagine you <laughs> you'll need and you've always got your tissue if if it gets too sort of like a sort of pool of water and, and it feels a bit out of hand um, so you'll see that I'm just kind of blending these colours with water and it already, I, already I love that. I love that it's moving and um, although it's not a kind of photographic representation, it's a lovely organic um, representation um, of the apple. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. It has that same uncontrollable element, um, which, I, which I really love, just like, just like um, this apple here. So... Again, I'm really sorry, but you're going to have to, <laughs> to leave it alone and go on to the next thing. So we'll sort of keep doing this. So actually my carrot is, is pretty dry now, so I'm going to add another layer because this one is all about the layering of the paints, um, which is another brilliant way that watercolours work. And actually it's really lovely when you have these two elements um, and you can see those different colours. You can see there's a yellow, there's an orange, there's a darker brown and that mix of th that's just layering it's just the, it's just leaving it for a bit and going back to it which um which is the it is the kind of golden rule of this module really so i'm just going to go over it adding another sort of dimension and um making it more interesting really and more like nature there's so many colors and everything so you're sort of playing around with all the paints and all the colors and leaving things and then going back it's almost like you can't really overwork things once they're dry something like a carrot you can add and add to it um, and, and it'll and it'll be um, it'll be effective now I would like to do some radishes now obviously I haven't been able to just pull some radishes out of the ground but they are stunning um, and it's a really lovely technique so I'm going to do some of these radishes I don't think I'll do all of those um, uh, because I want to put so much on my page so I'm going to choose um, a, a sort of similar color and I'm going to draw three radishes here 
And they've got those lovely sort of squirrely little tails. They look like sort of tadpoles, don't they? They're amazing. Um, and you're going to do one at a time. So we're just going to do this middle one. Using your clean water, you're going to cover, and the reason we're not doing them all at the same time because we're using so much water, they will literally just bleed into one another. So using your water, you are um, filling that middle one with lots of water. Then, a lovely, really bright, really lovely colour. You're just going to dub it. Look at that, it's just magic, isn't it? It's just amazing. You just leave it. Again, it's really hard to leave alone, but I promise you, it's worth it. So just dab the water and just leave it alone. That's just stunning, just leave it. And then you'll do the others when that's dry in the same, in the same way. So another one, another one we're just going to leave alone. So whilst that's drying, I might do some berries. There are some on your reference sheet, but I really like the fact these have got red stalks. So this one, I'm going to use a red pencil. Um, and I'm just going to um, follow, I think I'm going to follow roughly this reference here, but I'm going to use red. So following that, I'm just going to draw lots of lines. doesn't really matter where they go, these lines. And make sure that they're not too close together. So happy with those lines. Now I'm going to get a blue and add a little bit of pink to it so that it's got a kind of really nice sort of depth to it, but it's not too blue. And here's when your cotton bud is going to come in handy. So really watery, really watery. You're going to do a circle for each of these berries and you can do them all at the same time. Lots of paint make sure that there is a lot of water and they're not too, they're not too um, sort of scratchy and dry. Now you're just going to add a drop of water, make sure it's the, the clean water and add it to it. Um, and just make sure the whole of it is full of water. It's a really nice technique. So it's incredibly watery, but you've got a kind of darker outside. Now taking your cotton wool, you're going to put it on it and roll it around and it's just, isn't that lovely? It's so beautiful. Actually, it's really berry-like. It's really berry-like because the outside remains quite dark. It has that slightly dusty uh, quality, just like, um, like a sort of a blueberry or a slowberry. Um, and there, perfect. And that's it. You've done those. But how simple, how lovely is that? They look so effective. Right, so the next thing I want to do, um, I'm going to do an oak leaf, which are just such a beautiful shape, but they are quite hard to draw. We could use the same method where you draw around the leaf as we did with the leaf with the needle. But actually, if you have got a few spaces around your page um, and you want to sort of maybe fill it with some leaves, this is quite a nice little tip. If you're looking at the shape, it's very roundy. So I'm going to start with a circle, lots of paint, and do it all at once so that you don't get that edge. And I'm just going to keep doing these circles, lots of paint, always lots of painty water. And as I am um, squishing the paint around with these circles, I'm making a really nice acorn um, oaky, it's an acorn coloured oak leaf. Um, and it's a really nice way of, of painting, painting leaves. Um, and then of course you could use the needle method on top to add in all those veins and all those details. Or what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to wait till it's dry um, like I've done here and I'm going to add all the veins on with a sharp pencil just to kind of give it that difference really. So there's a lovely difference between all the leaves on the page. So. I love toadstools. I am going to follow the reference because I obviously don't have one in front of me. Lucky you, if you found one, you've got one in front of you. Um, but they're really magnificent. So I'm going to draw out my toadstool. And this is one of those ones I'm afraid we're going to, just going to do and leave till later as well. So um, drawing in the trunk, it's got sort of two tiers. Using my larger brush this time, I'm going to choose a really bright colour and this time it's about really filling it in with that 
really bright colour because we're going to add white paint afterwards. So I am just boldly, boldly putting on this incredible red <laughs> because they really are a really powerful colour and you do want this to kind of jump out from the page. Um, so we're just literally covering the whole of that toadstool with that lovely paint and waiting for that to dry. So once you've got all your images and you're happy with the painting, um, you can then add your pencil detail. Quite a nice idea just to add um, a little bit of um, kind of accentuating the shapes a bit with your pencil. For instance, with the carrot, I've added lots of lovely little details. So the leaf, um, feels really kind of fluffy and furry like carrot leaves do. You might want to just define the radishes a little bit and, um, and kind of give them a little bit more definition, but, uh, but not losing this lovely wateriness that the watercolours have created. And you might want to kind of add a little bit of detail to your apple with your pencil as well. It's a really nice mix of mediums and they work really successfully together. And of course, finally, the cherry on the cake literally it's the white dots on the uh, toadstool so you'll need some white paint i'm going to just use gouache looking at your reference it's interesting because they aren't just dots like a sort of comedy <laughs> toadstool they are a lovely shape so taking your smaller brush quite thick you need it quite thick you're then going to add all the dots all over your toadstool like this um, so that it's completely covered and you've got all the dots on your toadstool. There are larger ones um, and suddenly it starts to really take shape and, and look like a sort of quintessential autumnal toadstool. It's really magnificent and it just sort of really jumps out of the page. It's beautiful. Then when it's dry, you could add some pencil so that it was kind of accentuated so that you've got a little bit more of that depth and more detail. I've put purple here and a darker red just to kind of bring that mushroom to life. So there you have it. You should end up with a book with all of the items all sort of positioned so there aren't that many white spaces. And if there are, um, filling it with little leaves or using little bits of white paint as you've done here um, this uh, member of my sketchbook club has put little white dots on her berries, which is really effective. Similarly here, you can see how effective that really watery radish technique was. Um, and also just the use of pencil. Here we've got a lovely use of pencil. It's got a lot of detail in with the, with the pencil and a little spot splat of little speckles for this really spotty pear that we had at the time. So there are lovely methods used here. So I really hope um, with this module that not only you've got this fantastic autumn spread, um, but also hopefully um, not quite as afraid of watercolours and, and also just to kind of discover what they can do, how magic they are when they're just sort of left to their own devices. Love to see, love to see what you're doing. Um, as I said, it it's not just autumn. Lovely if you could do this in the spring and summer too. So the hashtag for this module is Sketchbook Club Nature Table. Can't wait to see what you've done. Mm -hmm.